Lucas. Uh, an hour uh, earlier. I think we're going to be missing the Americans tonight. I have a feeling that they will be an hour late. Because... No, no, I let them know. Oh, yeah? Yeah. But still, people would just tune on. If they don't see Judy Morgan sharing it, who's the main sharer in the US, if they don't see that, you would just turn on at the normal time. And I, I shared it. Oh, okay. Well, that's good, Brent. You are on the ball. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> British standard. You see, you've got to know that there's somebody else out there doing stuff for you. <laughs> Not my wife always says. You're just so lucky that she looks after me. As a, a, it's funny going through the airport. Really reminds me of how a weak a man I've become. Like I used to do a lot of traveling and all that kind of stuff. Very independent, I thought. And then once you kind of you, you hold on to your passport, Elaine minds all the passports, and I'm like, no, I'm I'm minding my own passport. I'm a bloody man. And uh, you, you hold on to that ridiculous, misguided idea for a few years. And then uh, eventually Elaine's minding the passport and I'm just trundling along behind her with the bags. So now when I go through an airport, if I don't have her, like I'm kind of like a dog lost in it. And I get I get nervous. I get nervous going through the departures now. So I just follow Elaine. She's got everything, all the boarding passes, all the, she's, what time is the flight? Where do we go? Okay, I just carry everything. So uh, that's <laughs> what I've been reduced to in the family, sadly. So I have been away. I've been in, I went to Lanzarote. For a week just to oh nice yeah oh, is, is is that the irish tan that you've got there or is Tent that is that spray is that yeah. spray <laughs> yeah it did yeah a little bit of else pan before i came on but uh yeah so bit of heat it was it was very very nice and the ginger one is away himself uh for the next two weeks so is he's he won't be able to come in i wouldn't say his wi-fi will be any good so it'll be just me and you Brent for tonight is that right yeah, yeah. For oh tomorrow. we've got to get the right title on oh there yeah. we go no, right. <laughs> simple as that one word i was just saying my favorite slang word in the world is bum nuts aussies <laughs> they took a perfectly good word short and sweet and they turned it into two syllables bum nuts oh it's See, a... i thought i'd come on and this would be you going oh did you know there's <laughs> It's the classic egg image, isn't it? Two eggs, two eggs and a hanky. But, uh, always, always, you can't get away from it. That's anyway, too... we are uh, we are raw pet medics for anybody still listening, uh, <laughs> and uh, I am here with the finest vet in the world, Brendan Clark, and me, Connor Brady, and we are here talking about eggs all tonight. Uh, I'm very excited, Bren. Uh, also, we're on Patreon dot com forward slash raw pet medics any kind of help you can give us there price of a cup of tea or preferably a pint each month is uh preferably very a very pint. yeah preferably <laughs> a pint especially at dublin prices at the moment uh check out the dublin prices and give us that nine eight to nine euro for a pint and <laughs> get us in temple bar don't go to temple bar whoever's visiting ireland um rita hogan's actually coming to ireland soon so i'm gonna be meeting up with oh, her soon go for your walk. Gin. Yeah, pure gin is the cheapest way straight from super value in your sock uh, <laughs> Anyway, um, oh. so yeah, Bren, eggs. Listen, would you mind if I started off by quizzing you about eggs and checking out oh your egg my knowledge? Oh, God, no. Yes. Go on. Because, because you know, I think you know absolutely everything in the world, but I think you are, you are going to struggle. I have spent all day formulating the perfect egg quiz. Oh. Uh, so, and, and if you want to play along at home, uh, please do and give me some yeah. hints. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna need them because i know you can't do google there i want to see your hands up here the whole time okay this i'll start i'll, I'll ease you into it I'll what's the forfeit it. what's the uh, forfeit eat, eat those eggs eat those raw eggs yeah oh um, yeah i'll eat i'll eat raw eggs yeah I you mean, eat raw yeah. eggs yeah. Oh, gross yeah. that is all oh, the time God. in you serious smoothies. <gasps> oh, wonderful yeah. just to create that creamier texture it's just mm. I like uh, I wonderful. like the egg white on top of a cocktail, but that is about it. I, other than that, I wouldn't have much of a raw egg in my. Uh, oh, thanks, you Nicola, me. for that. <laughs> so she's just put Dr. Brendan Clark, expert. Oh, oh! I actually put up a post there saying, "I wonder how many egg jokes Brendan's going to tell tonight." But uh, <laughs> somebody else has. Oh, you're joking! <laughs> oh, oh, that's just. <laughs> yeah, Nick would love that. Nick's probably laughing. He, Nick probably just laughed over on, on holidays, going, "Huh? Why am I laughing?" Because he just wanted that joke. Um, okay, look, here's. I'll start you off simply. Okay, um, let's say you took that egg out of the fridge and you weren't quite sure if you hard boiled it or not. Okay. How would you test to find out if it's hard boiled or not without cracking the shell? Floats or not? Ooh. Oh, mm. I, that's not my answer, so I'm just going to no. say that. <laughs> you, would, uh, you would spin it on a counter, of course, Bren. How did you not know? Oh, you, because you then when you press the egg, and then if it's 
if it starts <laughs> spinning again, the yolk's still spinning inside the egg. Well, that's that's actually nearly true. I don't know what that bit is. I think that's that's I don't know what that is if that's true. But if you spin an <laughs> egg, a raw egg, the yolk moves around inside and it wobbles all over the place. Whereas if you spin a hard boiled egg, it rolls in a very perfect kind of a egg shaped kind of circle. Um, is yeah, that right? So, <laughs> yeah. What do you mean if you just sort of like roll it across the counter? Well, across the also, counter, there's no wobble to it because the yolk's not. Yeah. <laughs> So there you go. My dogs well, are currently looking at me like, are you going to feed me these eggs? When are you going to kill them? <laughs> so let's say, let's say you fed those eggs to them raw, Bren. Okay. And we yep. all we all know that raw eggs are actually harder to digest than cooked eggs, which I think is very, very interesting. But do you know how much more digestible a lightly cooked egg is compared to a raw egg? Give me a percentage. Uh, what's your definition of digestibility? Energy oh, release or assimilation? Oh, I'm going to say assimilation because I don't know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> as, long as, no, right as long as there's no more questions, <laughs> definitely assimilation. Because all, all of the data is on energy release. So Pretty it yeah. will be um, probably about 30% more um, digestible or energy release if you um, cook it than if you... Yeah, if you not too far off. 50 versus 90%. 90 percent oh. i mean that's a massive massive increase by cooking an egg uh, i'll i'll do a little bit on that later on why cooking can actually help there's a few different reasons on uh, that but anyway for now i'm going to give you a point for that Brian. that's two i've got a few more to get through here Um, on that average how many eggs does a hen lay per year oh good grief well it depends on the lighting Ooh, well, yeah, fair. because oh fair <laughs> because you know if you don't if you just go on natural laying that's going to be totally different to if you artificially light the we're uh, hen talking because we're talking artificially you... lit maximum lane that's what we're talking all right about. so are you talking egg egg broiler industry. in a hut yeah oh with yeah light yeah. Yeah. not able to move more than a foot yeah you're making me sound like the bad guy mind. this is this yeah, is coming from the <laughs> 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 oh, oh um, what do you reckon? It's going to be probably um, you'll get, I reckon you'll get at least an egg a day, possibly two if you're lucky, and it'll be um, on a basis of probably two and a half months and they'll be out and ready for the next lot to be moved in because they just run them ragged. In those wow, the only last two houses. and a half months of lane. Oh, it's like ridiculously low. You serious? So, they don't even get a year at the job. Yeah, and and Martini, you're right. It is one a day in a normal country chicken. Uh, so it's just one of those uh, things. But yeah, they really run them ragged. It's horrible. It's horrible. Oh, they man, don't last is, very long is, at all. This is a terribly sad uh, thing. Oh, somebody I'm, said three hundred. No, you're not going to get three hundred out of a hen. I'll tell you that. I'll, I'm now, just I, well. That's my answer. Whoever said 300 really? is, uh, yeah, oh, it's well an done, average. Kelly. This is a UK egg industry factoid. Uh, on average, a hen lays 300 to 325 eggs per year. Which type of hen? Which breed? In what certain situation? Uh, yeah. Don't know. Th these oh. hens apparently last a year. So, sorry, I didn't do my research on this. I didn't realize we were going to go. So, so that, can't, that must be a barn hen, not a, a barn hen. battery yeah. hen. Yeah, these are, these are you know. These are facts from the old hen laying industry. Okay, here's another one. This um, one last one last kind of more in depth one that you can't possibly know. On average, how many times do you think a hen will turn her egg to stop the yolk sticking to the inside? A day. How many times will she turn her eggs a day to stop the yolk sticking to the inside? Oh, until four they're... times a day. Fifty. Fifty times a day. Oh I mean, somebody, somebody has to be feeding her because that is an absolutely atrocious job. Okay, here's, here's a here's well a, done. These yes, absolutely. Questions. Fifty. These are good questions. Okay, here we go. How many eggs does the UK consume every year? Sorry, go and say that again. How many eggs How are many consumed eggs by the, the entirety of the UK population? entirety of the uk i would say it'll be getting on for 1.5 billion not 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 the worst guess because you're in the billions and the answer is 11 to 12 billion eggs a year oh. are consumed Wait, how much are consumed as eggs and how much are consumed 
in and whilst that like breakdown, being processed into a load of other stuff i didn't look at us i didn't look at the breakdown i actually wandered off into some omelet making um <laughs> somebody, made, somebody made 472 egg omelets in half an hour and i was like 472 egg omelets that is incredible anyway so that's where my mind goes i think i'm on like adhd actually uh anyway so um that, that equates to about 200 eggs each a year okay just a few more questions left here um, if you're to lay out all the eggs that Britain eats or that the UK eats, 12 billion eggs a year, how many times would that go around the earth if you led, laying them end to end? Lay out all the eggs. Okay. <laughs> just, oh, wow. These are impossible questions. I'll just tell you. They are. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, seven five. times. Se oh, five. Oh, five. That's not bad. Five. You should have surely got a point for that. Yeah. I've, I've obviously got smaller eggs than you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lancashire hens. Um, so, how come the US have to keep their eggs in the fridge? And we don't. Ah, uh, that's probably something to do with bacterial risk and how old they are when they get to the store. Oh, yes. Not that's their bacterial risk is definitely spot on. They are uh, acutely aware of the bacterial contamination that can be on their eggs, and so they disinfect them. And because it's naturally antibacterial, an eggshell, even though it's got 15, 17,000 pores, guess who's been Googling eggs? Um, <laughs> so it's a very breathable uh, kind of porous surface, but it's covered in antibacterial it's goop. And never so, wash your so you eggs. Don't wash your eggs is the tip. I thought this is cool. Never I hope. I wonder, are people still listening? Is there anyone still listening to this? <laughs> oh, it's like, it's it's like, there's 103 people. <laughs> oh, my God. Not bad. Oh, plus, plus those on YouTube. <laughs> uh, interesting. Okay, here we go. Uh, one more thing. Um, nah, this is more of a factoid. Yolk is the old English term for yellow. So it used to be said to be egg whites and egg yellows. So that's what, that was what the, where the word yolk comes from. True or white? Egg whites and yolk contain the same amount of protein. Uh it's not true. The um, egg yolk, according to the uh, paper uh -oh. that I read, actually has more protein. Yes. Well, that I'll accept. It is, on average, egg yolks and egg white have the same amount of protein, three grams of protein in each, which is so surprising. I literally was thinking just pure right. fat in the egg yolk. But actually, on, on measures of most breeds of eggs, there's more protein in an egg yolk than there is in an egg white. And I mm. thought, what? So you were, you're not far off there. You're a pretty Don't forget, the egg white is actually protein dr keeping fluid around the yolk. So that is the only water that that developing embryo can consume in its development. So ah, it's yeah. holding water. So it is effectively like a mucin layer. So it's, um yeah, yeah, really interesting. So a lot of water in that egg white. Oh, yes, that, that explains why there's so little kind of protein in it, because there's so much water in it. Um, okay, last bit. Cloudy eggs, good or bad? Oh, uh, what, you mean cloudy as in when you've broken them and they look a bit cloudy? Yeah, in they a look thing. a little bit Depends cloudy. what temperature they are. Oh, come on, Brad, this is not fair. These things... <laughs> We got spanners in the works. If they're out the if they're out the fridge, they probably are cloudier than if they're out of the thing. Now, what no. you've got to be careful of is as the bacteria act on the um, mucin, the the albumin, it will go more liquid. So if you crack an egg and it's almost like watery, you know, stuff that's coming out, that's usually because the bacteria have started to have Correct. a go at the egg. That's pretty much the answer to the question, actually. So a very, very clear, very runny egg is a sign of age. So that egg has been there for a while and the bacteria have been doing what bacteria do. So a really fresh egg will actually be really cloudy. So a fresh egg is not a bad thing. That's a really, really fresh egg. And the longer you leave it out at room temperature in Ireland and the UK, lots of people pop them in the fridge. I wouldn't say it matters a damn lot of difference, really. Uh, but... Uh, it becomes more and more transparent and clear and runny. So when you've got a really clear, really, really runny egg, that's an aged egg. But mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, very good, Bren. You did. Do you have any more? Um, our last one this is just silly. True or false, the older the bird, the thicker the shell. Yeah. So, yeah, very good. Oh, I think that's true. Do you know why? Because I, I think they take longer to travel down from the ovaries before they're laid. And actually... <laughs> the shell is effectively a crystallized structure on the outside. So if they're taking longer, 
then it will have longer to to build. But then I guess it's um, it's a little bit like, or are you going to say all of these old hens have got osteoporosis and therefore not enough calcium? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm going to say the latter. I love the way you actually had an answer and an explanation for why that happened. <laughs> It's the opposite. So, egg, uh, the older the bird, the thinner her her eggs. They yeah, it is. you oh, often oh. will see that actually. You know the old farmyard hen, and you'll oh, get yeah. all of these slight, you know, these eggs that you'll suddenly find somewhere oh, that they and, oh, yeah. and all you'll try and pick them up, and they're just like got the most fragile shell oh, ever because yeah. you uh, you've got some old bird, and I'm afraid that's yeah. time for her to uh, go to doggy Become heaven. Come to become more dog food. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so that is good, Brian. Well done. That's a 12 egg questions there. Um, so I will I will pause there. Wow. Now and, uh, is there anything interesting you'd like to tell me about eggs? Well, actually, I think there was a really great um in the UK, a really great program. Some of you may know um David Attenborough and his uh, whole Birdie. yeah, wildlife stuff, and they were doing the whole birds um and talking all about eggs and there was a really useful thing on there that tells you about the development of the egg and so i think really this is um something that many of you may not know but when the ovary produces the yolk um and effectively there's a little disc on there which is the true egg which the semen and in some birds like albatross they can actually keep that semen fresh for um, weeks, not just, you know, a few days. Um, and the semen basically is there to fertilize that one little spot on the yolk. And then the yolk is released into the fallopian tube and travels down. And in that process, it builds and then eventually gets to a part where it starts to release a mucus, the albumin, onto the outer and it develops this thicker and thicker albumin around that until it gets to another part and there is a special set of cells which then will start to deposit calcium on the outside of that once a membrane has formed so it actually encloses that mucus with a membrane and then what then happens is you end up with a <coughs> little bit of um, cells which plug onto the surface and develop the crystal structure um, of calcium on the outside. Um, and actually even, you see these little spots? Can you see the little spots on the shell? Yeah, we can, little freckles. <coughs> so there are little pigment um, things that are almost like a paintbrush. So this is constantly turning inside the um the uterus and these little pigment cells will literally put little dots on to the shell so you'll get little smears to camouflage the egg yeah amazing development yeah. um for those so that and then deposits out and did you know they were even talking about which way do you think that comes out of the chicken pointy end first or blunt end first if it was coming at my bottom, uh, I would rather the pointy end first and get to the get to the main event. So <laughs> what they found was that they there was a man in 1900 took a pencil and put it up and put an X on yeah you know, put it up the back end of a chicken. Oh, that's a good idea. X um, that yeah, you know, just to have a little look at what was going on um, and. What they did was found that if you did that an hour before, then what would happen is that the cross would be on the pointy end. But when it actually comes out, it turns the egg and comes out blunt end first. So if you put a cross just before it laid, it was on wow. the blunt end. So Spins. there we go. Spins the so, egg in her butt before she lays it. I mean, you just you're just I causing know. yourself unnecessary grief to go <laughs> blunt end first. I mean, just stay pointy end way. That just doesn't make any sense. Chickens didn't think that one through. That's oh just, uh, right, I'm just I'm sorry, guys, for those out there that are asking what is going on with the sound. I'm just going to check what is happening with the sound because um, there should be. Um, let's see if that's any better. But we're getting a bit of reverb for some reason. I was getting reverb, yeah. yeah. That's gone now. Um, 
it should be fine. I've turned my Coming microphone back. down. Output's fine. How's your end? No, Are you on the right back. You had it. You had it down, but it came back again. Oh, one second. And I just need. I was hoping they didn't hear that. <laughs> I hope that that has changed things for the better. So, uh, that's uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. No, I'm still getting feedback when I. Gone. Gone. I'm gone. No, you're gone. I can hear you, but I, I don't hear any more uh, reverb. I'm not getting the I'm not getting my voice in my ears. Oh, were we, were you getting some reverb before? Oh yeah, I was. I, I'm getting a tiny bit now, but not a lot. See what the people are saying. Oh, peeking, oh, peeking, hack out that three minutes. I could yeah. tell. I could tell you were starting to sense it when you were speaking. I thought, is he actually listening to what I'm listening to? Um, <laughs> well, there we go. Well, let's have a look. So hopefully, that's resolved it. So, sorry, guys, if you were uh, otherwise. Um, the that's a very interesting. That's yeah, very thanks, interesting. Rich. I also like the fact that it's uh, slightly odd shaped, which obviously stops that egg rolling in a straight line if it was to roll off cliffs and whatnot. So it only rolls oh, a very okay. small amount of distance and it goes in a semicircle. So that was for birds on a hill and birds on ledges and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But most birds have kept it. And that's kind of interesting. So the other thing that people aren't sure about, don't don't necessarily know what it means, okay, is this little lion mark. Okay. Oh, yeah. Do you know what that's all about? I would say that it's made in the UK anyway. Um, oh, 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 we're just being patriotic. This is a British egg. <laughs> yeah, totally. Just in case you're trying to smuggle it out of the country. Like over here. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've got a shamrock on ours. Um, no, I don't, right? <laughs> I don't understand uh, the numbers on it. I'm sure that I saw, I saw somebody post a, bit, a little meme about it recently. But uh, yeah, what is it? What do the numbers mean? All right. So, uh, well, the numbers are all about um, which uh, units, so which, where the egg layers are, okay? And there's a date on there as well, okay, which gives a rough idea of a best before date. Now, that's best before, and that will depend on whether you wash the eggs, um, you know, all of the other aspects that we've just talked about, um, how you keep it, whether it's in the fridge or not. So um, there are best befores. Um, honestly, that is just what it says. It's a best before, not a used by date. Best before, okay? not bad after. So don't go wasting eggs if they're a little bit beyond the best before date. Even okay? to the dog. Um, they may be perfectly good. Um, only if you break them into a glass, like so, okay, um, and then you end up with um, uh, a horrible green runny mess, okay, and a slightly odd smell, don't give that to your dog, yeah. okay? I think that goes without saying. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> say. okay. so, but I would eggs. say um, I've had eggs which have been a month beyond that best before date and been absolutely fine. Okay. Of so In the travel that's lodge. Amazing how well they will last. Wow. Um, so the other thing that's really interesting is how many people use eggshell as a calcium supplement for yeah. their dog instead of bone material. Um, and I just like to say there's a slight difference. If you put an egg in a glass, I'm going to do this very carefully because I don't want to break it. And actually, I have some vinegar here. Okay. Then the this thing show to do, was brought to you by you... Sarsons malt vinegar. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, just <laughs> Thanks, prove it's malt vinegar. So what happens is as you put that in can you see the little bubbles appearing on the egg i shell? can i can see little okay. bubbles so brent's put an so, egg in a glass and he's covered it with vinegar and there's little bubbles appearing on the surface for those okay so that podcast. is carbon dioxide that is starting to effervesce off the surface of the egg and i've been reading lots of people talking about peeling eggs so that they can access the membrane but if you um, are not averse to a little bit of vinegar smell, okay, you can put your eggs into a glass like that and leave the shell to dissolve into carbon Ooh. dioxide and water. And then you will have the egg with membrane that you can feed to your dog. Ooh. So, as I, I, as so I can't help but think I want it now. How long does this take? Like a week? 
so I believe it's um, within 48 hours that will be totally gone. But I think I believe you can actually use it earlier than that. So I'm going to look. The time is yeah. 7.26. We will right. find out tomorrow because if it's Interesting. all gone, yeah. it will be there. You it's won't like have one of those experiments where you put your eggs ever again. Yeah, but I mean, people want to make stuff now. They don't want to oh, get the vinegar out. I wouldn't mind an omelet this time tomorrow. <laughs> you know, that's it's just. Not an this is for no. giving to your dogs. No, 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 no. <laughs> Without now. overdoing want... the calcium. I want everything now. <laughs> Um, I was watching somebody. Sh oh, I was one of these little Instagram reels where a guy was showing how to um, perfectly take the shell off an egg and leave the membrane on it, like some sort of hot cold water thing. So you take it out of the hot water and you douse it in icy water. I think that's most important for oh, peeling the shell off. So if, it, if, you, if it's cooked, if it's cooked, yeah, you can put it in a jar of yeah. water. Okay seal the top and then just shake it that's right as if that's what it is and, and it breaks the egg shell off leaves yeah. the egg shell in the thing and you just pull the, the egg perfect out. yeah it's, all the membrane is still on the egg yeah that's cool yeah so the, the membrane and the shell thing is interesting i think uh, um there's a a good business at the moment in both of those products egg shell and egg membrane and when people are diy in raw dog food they often struggle to find the bit of bone uh they don't have a grinder at home and it's not easy to think where will I get this bit of bone content and people don't want to feed meat on the bone for whatever reason. So they go looking for some bone product and there isn't a very lot of suitable bone meal products out there. A lot of people are selling bone meal, but it's the same bone meal that goes into um, kind of pet food. And it's, you know, very, very ultra processed stuff. Uh, talk about Maillard reactions, you know, studies show very, very hard to digest, a lot of protein loss, you know, as you can imagine. So people go looking for a bone replacement. An eggshell calcium, eggshell powder is a very common product to put into dog food because everyone's very concerned about the protein or the calcium phosphorus ratio. And this ratio is a hangover from dry dog food because if you're making a complete product in inverted commas, particularly if you're using um, you know, strange sources of phosphorus and, um, uh, and calcium carbonate, you have to get that balance right because over time you can lead to all sorts of joint issues and whatnot and, and all sorts of hormone release issues and everything. So uh, getting that balance is, is really critically important in, in complete dry food. And people come to raw dog food thinking that it's the most important thing ever. Surely calcium is, is, is important. But I think what it, what it, while it's a good source of calcium, eggshell, and probably a couple of minerals here and there, that's about it. Uh, but when you compare that to what bone actually is, as, as we keep on saying on the show, Bone is far more than calcium. Bone is, you know, your glucosamine, your chondroitin, collagen, hyaluronic acid, and eggs do contain some of that in their membrane, which we'll get into in a second, but nothing like bone material. Also, um, egg membrane contains a bit of collagen, 1, 5, and 10, but not collagen 2, which is the stuff you really want when you're doing, um, when you're thinking about joints, which is interesting. So, um, you know, also oh. bones, yeah, clean teeth, they're a mineral sink. That's where you get most of your copper and selenium and zinc and all sorts. Your bit of manganese in an animal it only exists in the bones. The rest of it is on the outside. So bones are really, really important. And I think using eggshell membrane, I think it's important to know it's not it's not a replacement for bone. It's like a poor substitute. It'll do the job absolutely fine. It'll get a bit of calcium in there. A teaspoon, a level teaspoon or two per kilo of raw dog food mix is what people use. But as a, as a bone replacement, it's not. It'll do the job for a while. But if you're doing that, I would definitely still, if you can, include some raw uh, meaty bones in the dog's life. Um, but the membrane is gathering, gathering in coolness too. And that's because a couple of studies... Uh, show that you can use the membrane of an egg, which contains lots of cool stuff. Um, I actually wrote down some of the bits and pieces in the percentage. Um, where did I say it? It's uh, So it's lots of collagen, which is like cool carnivore fiber, and that's good. And then 7% glyco, glycosaminoglycans, which is one glyco too many for me, gags they're called, which is like um, your chondroitin sulfate and your uh, dermatin sulfate, hyaluronic acid, glucosamine. So that stuff is in collagen, is in that little membrane on the inside. There's two membranes, there's an outer membrane and an inner membrane. Weighs about one and a half grams, that, that membrane, which is important when you listen to the study. Anyway, um, they did a couple of studies. There's about five studies out there on eggshell membranes and joint pain, knee pain, stiffness, recovery. Uh, and the first one in 2009 
Really good study, randomized, multi-center, double-blind, placebo-controlled. That is a really good study. Uh, and they use 500 milligrams of membrane, which is maybe two entire egg membranes, the, the inner and outer membrane, the entire cell. So two egg membranes for each person each day. That's considered a high dose, by the way. One eggshell membrane is a low dose. Uh, so they're using about two eggshells per 60, 70 kilo human. Uh, and they follow them for 10, 30, and 60 days. And they found that it absolutely was beneficial to them, but it reduced pain by 16% and stiffness wow. by 13%. And I'm thinking, not bad, you know, not amazing, but uh, not not bad. So that's, there's a slight improvement in some of these. So I actually thought it was much more impressive than that. There was a, this is a French study, uh, and there was only 30 people as well, so pretty small. But a better study came out two years ago. This time they used 75 people. Again, the 500 milligram dose, which is two eggshell membranes in men. And uh, it decreased pain, it increased, they measured quality of life, but they also measured the muscle gain that the people had when they went to the gym for the month after. And the people taking the eggshell membrane had more muscle growth because they had less pain in their knee, which increases your quality of life, which gets you back in the gym and gets you back in rehab. And I thought that's a cool little addition to add on to your study, you know, that that little in improvement in the quality of it. Also, they found the results were better than curcumin. Uh, so I thought that was kind of cool, just from eggshell membrane. So, so was that just the membrane or was that eggs? Did those people end up eating the whole egg? Because wouldn't it be interesting? Because the, the majority of our eggs as somebody pointed out are infertile obviously there is no male cockerel going around having the time of his life in that yeah, yeah okay um these gonna get through all these literally you know sterile eggs because that's what birds do they will lay regardless of whether they're fertilized or not um and it is uh, a case of um i wonder how many other bioregulators are in the rest of the egg and how much that is a growth promoter um, for that muscle gain rather than it just being um, down to the collagen in that egg membrane. So that is that an be... interesting observation. And a guy did a study on that where he was saying, yes, uh, is Rocky right to be drinking? He In Rocky one, he drinks about seven or eight eggs before he does it, mm. which is what Stallone used to do when he was building muscle with steroids um so uh, and they said was was rocky right to be to be drinking the raw eggs and you know it turns out if you cook an egg you can get far more out of it but when they did a study of bodybuilders putting on muscle they gained the exact same amount of muscle on five eggs a day um cooked or raw it didn't matter they put on the same amount of muscle if that was their protein source so i thought that was interesting your man's point i can't remember exactly what it was but he said in terms of muscle growth it didn't make a damn bit of difference if the egg was raw or cooked i thought oh there's something there that i'm missing the study was quite long quite difficult to understand Which then it. brings me to martina's question which is what is it with sulfur in eggs do you know what i mean I I don't have a direct answer for that. I know it's part of this kind of glycoamino glycan kind of complex. I know this is like it's mm -hmm. like chondroit and sulfur and, and the other couple. There's three or four sulfates in that. Uh, but I don't understand. Remember, why it's a lot of the essential amino acids also contain sulfur. Mm. Yeah. So, I you know, there is a degree. Sulfur is an important element in your health and life and development. I bet. So, you know, uh, remember these eggs have all of the nutrients essential for growing a brand new embryo, whether they're fertilized or not. Um, and so they have a full range of essential amino acids within them, alongside all of the essential fatty acids, alongside all of those minerals that are required uh, for the essentials of life from iron through to phosphorus yeah. through to um, sulfur through to manganese through to magnesium it was interesting i found one study that went through a whole list of minerals and i'm thinking well it needs all of the ones vital for life um but it didn't have calcium in it and i thought surely they've just missed a trick what's going on there why have they not put calcium in that mineral mix um, surely they can't think that it extracts it from the shell as it's developing. Yeah. Uh, any any clues out there? Let me know. Um, oh, I thought you were going to tell me what it was. 
Um, no, no, where does it come I, I, I just came across a you know somebody's thought that well calcium wasn't an essential mineral to have inside that uh, that egg because you know yeah. it's got to develop. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought that hmm. was interesting. What anybody interesting. else out there think that? Um, I, um, I think. My, sorry, go ahead. I think the other thing that I wanted to touch on, uh, which I found uh, interesting, is this whole omega-3 and 6 um, yeah. business. With Now they're fortifying eggs. And it's wonderful to uh, think that people are out there thinking about how they can actually enrich the eggs and make them more nutritious. Um, and there were loads of studies uh, done looking through all of the papers to compare and contrast what's going on with this. And they know that, um, for instance, different species will have different levels of amino acids and minerals and nutrients. You know, um, quail eggs are notoriously supposed to be per gram more nutritious than a chicken egg. Um, there are increased fats we know in goose and duck eggs. Um, Makes them better for bacon. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> well, Does. I presumed it was actually making it better for when the young are born that they've got more energy stores. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> you just want to cook yeah, poor things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he just wants to make buns. Yeah, anyway. I'm hungry. Uh, so, um, but there's a lot of people out there for feeding uh, flaxseed or something along those lines. And I'm uh, was really interested in this. And when they looked at the relative levels of omega-3, great, they could fortify those by feeding the chickens flaxseed. Um, but it increased disproportionately the amount of ALA, not EPA and DHA. Plant now, omega-3. For us as humans, we convert between 1 and 3% of that ALA into mm -hmm. a... DHA or EPA, okay? Dogs are worse than that, and cats just can't do it. So if you're thinking of feeding these um, fortified eggs, let's call them, be aware, it's actually the EPA and DHA that are really important, and you may still need to give uh, another source, such as um, you know krill or um, fish oil, to supplement that correct level of EPA or DHA. Eggs that have been fortified in that way may not be sufficient. Now, there yeah. are other things that would improve those. So if those chickens have eaten lots of insect life, they've had much Probably more eggs. time out on pasture, they've got other you know, uh, stuff that's going on, they may actually naturally have much higher levels of EPA and DHA within their egg yolks. Yeah, no doubt you want an egg that's been poking around outside with the access to all that. I mean, that's the dream, um, but that's sadly not what you get. You get an intensively reared bird. Yeah, I love there was a Nigerian study that looked at that, you know, that the um, you know chickens that were running around the village had far more nutrients within the egg than oh, yeah. those that were artificially you know bought in a um yeah. a battery house and, and that's yeah no doubt no doubt but um, so i think yeah I Joey, was gonna say, um yeah you know uh, i think that's a good question to um to ask uh thanks joey from over on dr judy's page um oh, yeah. love, you know, love joey. controlling us right now <laughs> yeah um so uh what's your thoughts connor was the question store how are store eggs i mean are they good i mean yeah stores, are they good for your dogs oh guys eggs are just the best food ever i mean they are talk about complete food next to raw milk you know because you you're you're nursing animals on it for for life i can't think of any other food that might come near to this ridiculous concept of complete uh than an egg and i actually sat here thinking i wonder how complete an egg is 
Uh, and as I don't have access to a formulator with the Excel spreadsheets that people use, I have um, I do have access to Katie McCall. Um, so I I I whipped Katie McCall. Uh, yeah, the pet uk. Thanks, Katie. And when I've got any questions regarding completeness and whatnot, or you know, I just go to Katie and I ask her, and she knows this stuff inside out. So Katie, if my cocker spaniel is you know eating four hundred grams of raw dog food a day. What would that diet look like if it was 400 grams of raw eggs per day? And um, in short, she writes back, uh, fab, uh, except that you would blow out your vitamin D levels. And I thought, oh, I never would have thought, I should have asked you that in a question, actually. That would have been, I would have seen if you knew that. Uh, you probably would have guessed that. But it, it eggs contain virtually everything, particularly if you start putting in a bit of shell, you get that membrane in there. You are missing very, very little uh, I can't think what minerals they are, and I didn't get into it with Katie. But um, but vitamin D, if you ate 400 grams of raw eggs, so somewhere between feeding your cocker spaniel on pure eggs. And so people always say, is one egg a day okay? And generally when those people ask that question, they have fallen for the nonsense that came out about eggs in the 80s, which was a ploy to increase breakfast cereal to be eaten and reduce natural foods being eaten in the population. So it was eggs and cholesterol was the, was the, um, so was it we, the seventies was go to was work on an egg. Okay. Seventies was go to work on an egg, wasn't it? And then eighties okay. came along and everybody wanted to use cereals. Yeah. No, use Cheerios. Cheerios and is sugar, a way better. Sugar, sugar cereals. Of course, yeah, yeah. of course. And eggs are terrible for you. And so Sorry, it's, it's it, yeah. Maze flakes. Yes, <laughs> is what I yum, yum, say. yum. Um, so it took it to, that that leaves a mark in people, and it leaves people afraid of eating meat and 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 uh, dairy and and all the other things that have been incriminated in the last while. It's always the natural foods in favor of consuming some weird product, and so eggs have that bit of a hangover. But an egg a day for most dogs is absolutely fine. It's incredible food. So yes, yes, yes to Joey's question. Any eggs are better than no eggs. Outdoor reared eggs would be the best. So if you can find someone with their own eggs, um, their own hens, that is a wonderful food and you're lucky to have it. It's just uh, I think it's, that's the question why store-bought eggs, you know, because it's back to yeah. the washing, isn't it? And that's the the danger. If you're you know, getting washed eggs, what are they washed in? What are the other yeah. chemicals they may be using in those processes? Does the um, egg keep the chemical out? I, I would imagine that that egg keeps that chemical out. You would hope that the shell and the membrane keep that well, egg out. Well, the more you wash it, the more you break the oh, layer yeah. down on the outside, which is what then also oh, yeah. means that the bacteria can get in, but the chemical can get in too. So hmm. you've got to be careful. You know, there is a protective layer on the outside of this egg, which is naturally secreted as it's deposited out of the thing. But it also, the 80s brings me back to a very important reason that this little lion mark is on british eggs not because we go around being really super proud of our eggs um but it is actually also to signify that we have um a consumer confidence that those hens have had a vaccine now this is not somebody coming ah. along with a big needle and vaccinating each chicken but actually as chicks they are fed a dropper, which actually in the water they put this vaccine so that the um, the chicks effectively are vaccinated against salmonella. Mm. And it's just signifying that those eggs are unlikely to have a pathogenic strain of salmonella because they have been vaccinated or they mm. are from vaccinated. Somebody's not going and vaccinating each egg. Vaccinated um, egg, just, yeah. But they're a vaccinated chicken, uh, so it's unlikely that they are going to have salmonella in the UK. Um, yeah, that's, that's interesting. That one, one of the few eggs you can eat raw, actually. So, like, you can have complete faith, or a, a lot of faith, that it is salmonella-free, uh, vaccine-induced, sadly. I thought you got rid of the salmonella in your egg chain by killing all the hens with salmonella. Didn't your farmers have to report um uh, there was uh, a lot of killing culling culling, culling going culling. on Sorry, that sounds okay. better. um <laughs> uh absolutely but then vaccination came in there was no okay. way that they could do it otherwise it was oh, okay vaccination led okay um and finally what do they do with all the male chicks sadly in the egg laying industry uh they love female chicks because they lay eggs and the boys don't don't need them so sadly the day old chicks go to the grinder 
Is that true? They go to the grinder, they gas first Ooh. before they go to the meat grinder? Or? Uh, so, yeah, they, they have a carbon dioxide. So basically they um, are put into a carbon dioxide mix, which basically makes them fall asleep. Um, this is one of the dangers of high carbon dioxide that you will basically fall asleep, become unconscious, um, and that's how they uh, put them all to sleep um, without oh. any drugs. And that means that they can then be used for meat. Um, ah, so a lot nice. of, uh, so that's where you'll find some exotics. Uh, people will have them for their snakes, etc. But actually I've seen more and more cat owners go to uh, Kaiserbrink, do a yeah. lot of day old chicks I was okay, going to say. and they will use those as a, a treat for their dog because it's got all of the stuff that you'd find in an egg but in a day old chick okay yeah. and usually much cheaper yeah that's right Sorry, that was another there. egg that was another egg joke much oh i missed cheaper. it Oh, che oh cheaper. Anyway. That's not bad. That's at least it's original. I haven't heard that. Um, yeah, so that is a great food source. I'm not just people don't want to think about it. I mean, you don't want these things going to waste. It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy because they're so cheap or oh, so cheap that you can't say it. Stop saying it now. It's a tragedy because they're so cute and lovely and nobody wants a day old animal not getting a chance at life. But, you know, if the eggs are, if the hens are laying as hard as Brian was saying at the start, is that much of a life anyway? Maybe they've escaped a life. But um, so it, it'd be a tragedy if they weren't used. And so if they're gassed and, and used in food, um, that would be a very high quality food item because it's just brand new, nice and clean, uh, I, I but hairy and feathery though, brains. Um, uh, Danielle Gun Gunmore said to me uh, up at Edinburgh University, she was surprised that no pet food company was producing a mouse and chick cat diet because yeah. she said it would just be one of the most obvious diets to give yeah. uh, for that particular species. Because you wouldn't you have know? a turnover. Right. It's, it'd be like trying to sell horse, complete horse product in the UK. Just wouldn't sell tonnage. It would sell little bits, bits and pieces of go, yeah, horses, cows, what's it matter? But we like our horses. So it just, you wouldn't sell horse. Do we food, like our know? mice? Are we like... Uh, yeah, no, we bloody hate mice. <laughs> I, I love mice, by the way. I will not have anyone kill a mouse near me. Um, I love, but I don't, live, really? I don't live on a farm. Yeah, no, I, I adore them. I love mice and I love rats and I love them. Never had a pet one, always wanted a pet rat, but uh, too late for me now because I'm living with the you know, when you're doing all of that research uh, through the day and you sort of like you're googling stuff and then you sort of like see a video, you catch on to somebody doing a video about something, and then before you know it, you're into that death scroll of oh, yeah. seeing other videos Not that are well. related. And I saw, I saw um, one today of a, a cat that was playing with a toaster. And um, the woman was saying, there's nothing in the toaster. Leave the toaster alone. The cat's banging on the toaster and making the things springs go up and down. I say, what's going on? Will you leave the toaster alone? Just thinking it was playing. There's nothing in the toaster. Uh, so the cat it. looks at her for a moment, then whips back as a mouse jumps out from the toaster. <laughs> and catches <laughs> no the mouse and then runs off the mouse. Oh, bloody screaming. hell. Screaming. Poor little mice. Do you know what's amazing? I love what the, one of the kind of uh, defense mechanisms a mouse has is when they freeze. You know, they run and they jump out of somewhere and they don't move. And the cat's like, where's he gone? Where's he gone? And the mouse is right in front of them. But if he doesn't move, the cat doesn't see him and they just freeze. I've seen like mice running between the cat's legs and just not moving. And the cat's looking around for the mouse and the mouse is between his feet. You know, I mean, I can't imagine it ended well for that mouse, but he <laughs> did. I love mice. I think they're mm. so cute. But uh, yeah, no, a mouse, a mouse raw dog food would be, mm, I've thought about that. No, I've thought about cat that. Food. Or cat food. Cat food, mouse, yeah. I'm just saying dog food out of habit. Yeah, cat food. Yeah. Oh, talk, about, talk about a complete product, you know. That would be wonderful yeah, stuff. Be a way of controlling infection, all of the rest of it. You'd have to be enriching the mouse. Of course, there'd be a danger that the cat would eat the intestines, which obviously may contain plant material, which, Connor, you say they would never do. No, they do. I, I would. <laughs> nah. Yeah, no, day, old chicks, no. day old chicks will have nothing inside them anyway. So that's the chicks. No, the chicks day old chicks wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. But reared well, mice yeah. would. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Hey, look, uh, we better jump over to Patreon because it's uh, 10 days here. And I've got uh, only one more thing to add to eggs. It's not even that particularly interesting, which doesn't sound like a good lure to get people over to Patreon. <laughs> but I do want to talk about what is it about the cooking that makes the eggs easier to digest. So I just got something new on that. And uh, yeah, 
cool so look thanks brian that was cool that was right. interesting um and we will see you next week uh i don't even know what we've got planned we never oh, do come on you do what's next week because i was leading you in yes. with the contents of the mouse stomach ah. who we're going to talk all about fermented, fermented food because we're going to talk to the wonderful billy hopeman yeah who's going to be Juju. on live from pennsylvania and green yeah. juju and yeah. uh, really looking forward to that chat because that is one of my favoriteest things yeah. so um we're going to talk fermented foods next week uh myth busting cool. a little bit about is there histamine release you know what's going oh, on yeah. so please do join us next week um for that um in the meantime if you want to hop over to patreon in about an hour you'll catch up with the extra facts extra facts that we're going to um uh, reveal um, and uh, yeah, give you a bit of a um, a look into. Also, Doctor Nick has sent a video, and I've got to upload that. So we're going to oh. upload that to Patreon too. So you will get a Nick fix if you. Nice. <laughs> that's what are you that's about almost next? like a company that produces some other sort of videos, isn't it? Yeah, Nick, Nick fix. fix. That's <laughs> just a sweat in a tiny dropper bottle. Um, <laughs> Did, did he talk about eggs for 10 minutes? We've surely covered it. There's nothing new he could add to that. Oh, well, that'll be interesting, won't it? I mean, anyway, covered, so if you want a Nick fix, then you too can jump over to Patreon yeah. uh, for his little edition post Easter. Um, I, hope, I hope he's not filmed it in front of that swimming pool. Um, yes. These buggy smugglers. Yeah. Because otherwise, you you might get a view of one of these closer than you thought. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm off my breakfast. Um, yeah, so I can't stop thinking about Nick's fix now. It sounds like a drug. You know, Nick's to see you. <laughs> Nick Ain. But uh, we can bottle Nick and sell him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah. Oh, I'm bless you. Of, right. Names Wonderful to see you all. Uh, yeah. Take care. See you next week. Um, and uh, we'll be sharp then. And we'll be over on our Patreon page. Please Lovely. join us over there in an hour. Toodaloo. Take care.